close. Hey Beth. Hey Monica. Hello. Happy Friday. I'll give it a few more minutes. Hey Judith. Hey Cassandra. Okay. All right. So let's see. We are going to be doing the dainty day tripper. So if you have your pattern out and you're, the first part of the video today is going to be cutting and interfacing uh, and or stabilizing um, your fabrics. And I wanted to first introduce myself. Um, my name is Chinova. I'm a swoon modmin <laughs> and I do sew alongs and swoon. I'm also a mod here in um, Sewing for Mrs. H, Inspirational Group. I have never done a sew along in here before, but I've seen Monica's and I'm really excited to see that, um, see people that I'm familiar with the sibling company. I asked Miss, uh, Samantha, Mrs. H, if I can do the Dainty Day Tripper because I make this bag quite a bit. Hi, um, it's a fun bag. It's one of my favorite bags to give to um, two people as gifts, whether a new parent, a hiker, whatever it may be, like this bag right here. I've made um, a week and a half, a week and a half, almost two weeks ago. And I wanted to show you the bag first so that way when we're cutting out parts and you can say, okay, I want this to be color to be different or I want, you can pick and choose a little bit more comfortably what you want as your fabric. So this bag, if you have the pattern on page two, Samantha does not recommend faux leather, vinyl, or cork unless you have an industrial sewing machine. I have never made this bag actually in leather. I've only, I made it in cotton lacquer and co cotton woven. So maybe one of these days I will give, making it in vinyl a world. Let me, let me move my, my press <laughs> so you can see this. So here's the backpack. There's a lot of great features on this bag. You have a front pocket that unzips and it's pretty, pretty deep. Um, and it's throughout the whole front panel. So you could put a cell phone, um, chapstick, whatever into this bag. Then it has a slip pocket that has a magnet. So again, another great pocket. You have nice hardware feature on the side. There's a lot of rivets and you have one inch rings on the back you have diamond the diamond handle um connectors i have made this where i sewed individual connectors like d rings and rectangle i'm going to be 100 percent honest it didn't it it came out okay it was functional but i just like the way this looks better it has a more professional finish touch i have a double zip for the main pocket and this is where the magic happens it pops out like mary poppins <laughs> in the inside you have on the inside you have a a nice zipper pocket and it's nice and deep too so i like that and I put on this one a, a slip pocket. If we want to add that, we can add that. I just, I hate seeing blank space in a bag, especially if I can organize stuff. And then it closes back up. 
I really like this bag because it can, if you use like wax cotton or um, different material like corduroy, this bag can transcend into a lot of different things. I Like I said, I made this for some hikers and I made it with wax cotton. And I'm debating on, I have a friend that her husband wants me to make him a baby bag and I'm actually using, gonna use the, the Dainty Day Tripper and get all the hardware in black and I'm doing it in like this gray rustic color. So I'm really excited about it. Let me set this aside, not too far so that way you guys could ask questions. Okay, so one of the things in Swoon that I get a lot is that I am really bad at linking. So I asked Monica and to link some of the stuff that I say because <laughs> I have people asking me afterwards and sometimes I remember where I get it from and sometimes I'm just like, it's a blank. <laughs> um, but this one I definitely could tell you. Emmeline Bags has a Dainty Day Tripper set and it comes with everything. It comes with your um, one inch swivel hooks, your D rings, your um, sliders, the frame, and your diamond connectors. The only thing it doesn't come with is the rivets. So I like the, I like buying like packs, like kits, so that way I can just, even if I don't make it right now, it's with my UFO. So when I'm ready to make it, it's ready to go. And then I'm not like, that's why I didn't make it. <laughs> so, with this pattern, it doesn't consume a whole lot of fabric. Um, the strap is the thing that consumes the most. So, Mrs. H provides these really, <laughs> they're cute. Because at first I was like, what are these for? They're little name tags for each pattern piece, and it helps a lot because there's a pat there's a few pattern pieces that look kind of similar they look like it's really kind of brilliant they look exactly like the main panel piece but it's the pocket so there's not a lot of steps or pattern pieces so it's it's a good it's a good one to do on all my patterns, I write notes. So that way I can, if I make the bag again, I can make the adjustments. I always highlight zippers because for some reason, I never cut them right into, unless I have it like staring right at me. So for this one, you're gonna need one 18 inch zipper that's a size five and one nine inch zipper that's a size three. I Oh yeah, I love the tags. Like I did, I was at first like, why do I need that? And then when I had all these pieces, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. <laughs> um, so very similar to Monica, I really don't cut the, I'm gonna use zipper by the yard and I don't cut out the zipper until I'm at my sewing machine because even in her notes, um, Samantha says, if you're using um, like kind of zipper by the yard or, you need to cut out exactly 18 inches of the T. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I have weird, yeah, weird eating habits. So you just really pay attention to the zippers. All, all the hardware is for one inch and duct tape and your inner light and outer fabric. I'm gonna be using Allison glass for my outside fabric, but I really think it's pretty. And for the inside, Allison glass. And then for the pockets and possibly the strapping, depending on how much I have left of this, I'm going to use just this black that I got. So I like to do the pockets with a different color. The zipper tape. I'm actually not too keen on. I got this as a gift and I'm not ungrateful, but the color's really busy and I want it all black. And I apparently I'm all I have all black tape, but because the lining <laughs> is rainbow, I feel like this can work out. 
and I'm using iridescent hardware. Oh yes, and I have something similar to Mon Monica, and I've actually, I believe I heard Tammy use it too. Um, I am not a great straight cutter, so I got a template. Funny thing about this, so um, Tops and Bobbins actually didn't have the Dainty Day Tripper. So I was like, Samantha, do you mind if I get the template for the Dainty Day Tripper? Because it actually is a good selling um, bag for me and I would love to have a ruler because I print out stuff like if I accidentally cut it or whatever and I'm not the best cutter. So people that can cut well, I'm like, yeah, use those plastic templates like from the Dollar Tree, but I will destroy them. <laughs> um, so Samantha gave the okay for Tops and Bobbins and I got, they offering, they're offering the actual pattern piece, which comes on the fold and the full size. <laughs> so I'm going to be using the full size today. So yeah, they, thanks. I actually, I'm really excited about the fabric. I like Alice in Glass. I want to make a quilt with her fabric, but I always, when Fabric Candy Shoppy has like the pre-orders, for some reason, I never see um, Alice in Glass until it's like too late. So I'm gonna um, unscrew this. It comes on this nice little um, ring so that you can keep all your pieces together. And I'm going to put this aside because the first thing I'm going to cut out is my strap. Because you're going to need I'm going to do my um my strap pieces 4 by 9 um 90 inches cuz she has 5 and that's for like one one and one fourth and I don't have that hardware <laughs> I have exact you I you know actually I do I believe these are one and one fourth hold on it's the kit so obviously so I'm gonna measure it five by um, 90 inches but last time I didn't have the kit and I did four and I did not like the way it looks Yeah, the inside is one and one four. This ruler is a Westcott ruler, and the ruler <laughs> ticks off by one eighth. So I feel like really smart when I'm using this because I'll be like, yes, yeah, seven eighths of an inch, three four. Because I cannot tell you where any of that is on here. <laughs> this is also on Amazon. I have a million of these. If you were to go into uh, my workroom, every station has like two or three, even the ironing station. So I think I kind of want to do um, the strap in this color with this because at first I was like, or I could do all black for the strap. Hey, Ingrid. I'm trying to think. All black. It will look really pretty against the iridescent. Um, I know someone will probably ask, but my folding system is for mini bolts. I get it on Etsy and if I, sh I'll show you my room when we're done cutting and, I and ironing, then you'll understand why I have this system. I have a serious fabric addiction. <laughs> All right. So this is salvage to salvage. So I'm going to be cutting out a couple of these strips so that way I can make a 90 inch and I can sew it together. I 
I'm using Omni Thread Omni Edge Ruler. I'm just lining it up. Ty, um, RS45. <laughs> I just changed the blade. I'm going to cut out three because this is 42 inches wide and I haven't cut off the salvage yet. And I'll show you how to connect them, how at least I connect them. Tomorrow, well, either today or tomorrow. I could still, oh, well, we're going to, I'm going to add the interfacing first and I'll show you how I, I connect them. I do it very similar to bias binding so they can reduce the bulk. But yes, they're five inch strips. And I'm just going to go back and just cut off the salvages. Because sometimes when I'm lazy, and that is a lot, um, I will just with the salvage on like oh we'll get caught up in the seam allowance <laughs> and then I'm like regretting life later <laughs> oh this is the black fabric is a Riley it's a Riley Blake I believe and it's from 2019 but I know like Connecting thread still carries it every now and again. I see it. It's called texture. I remember I got it because it looks like burlap, actually. <laughs> Okay. All right. So we have our strap pieces. And then we start cutting out our regular pieces. I, unfortunately, Monica sent, like, I ran out of Monica's, um, interfacing, so she sent me some more, but U.S., UPS is not being very delivery <laughs> for me, so I am going to be using Shape Flex 101 that I got at Joann's. It's like a never-ending bolt or something. <laughs> So what I do when I have like a half a yard of fabric is <laughs> I bring the two wrong sides together and then so that way this can still be like it goes into my scrap pile and I can use it for keychains or 
what ha whatever, like if it's an accent piece. And the reason why I like these rulers is because you can really fussy cut what you want, like, I don't know, like, I can see three, like, all more butterflies on this side. You can move around the fabric so you can get the most out of your fabric. So, I'm going to put some pattern weights down. And I'm going to start cutting. Yeah. The cutting mat is a, a purple one. <laughs> it's a purple one that I got off of um, Amazon and I got it because it was purple. No other reason. Because it was purple. So what I do is I can either get my smaller 28 one or I just go in and <laughs> grab a pair of scissors and cut it out the shape and these are Kai scissors 7150 see I'm getting better at telling you what I have <laughs> all right so the reason that what I was telling you is I always do the wrong sides together and I go to where the salvages because then I can use this for like one of the pockets like the pot when you open it up you see this so it's it's a, <laughs> it's an odd personal preference but it's something that I like to do so I have my two pieces And then I'm just going to take my shape flex. I'm going to actually iron today because I usually do the press, but I want it to show how I iron because sometimes I don't use the heat press like if it's the summertime and it's just way too hot and <laughs> I don't want to deal with the heat. I just I'll sit by the iron. I, I do like to fuse block though because I feel like I get the most out of my interfacing that way. I have a a drawer of scraps of fuse and it's like label Frank a fuse and it's like a tub like this big <laughs> it's my it's one of my favorite tubs like one section I need I probably need to change the blade on my um my 28 rotary so we could just put no we have to do the lining um I'll just put this with that I'm doing the lining 
like to try to get all the bigger pieces out of the way. Um, I, I would, I haven't sewn this bag with vinyl, even the softer vinyl, like Emmeline's Mora is incredibly soft, but I prefer to Samantha to get <laughs> to not to like that this pattern is not really geared for vinyl unless you have an industrial that, um, that can take that, that will be able to. Um, but if I was doing it with a Mora fabric, I wouldn't interface it because you're going to, we're going to have to, um, uh, use shape or we're going to have to use foam and it'll just be way too thick. The corners of this, this bag is, it's a really tight fit and it's, it'll get real bulky really fast. <laughs> yeah the the I like the I like templates because of the fact that by the time <laughs> by the time if I had a paper pattern and I was drawing it out and I would I do draw it out um it just it's just e it's faster it's it's just faster it's one of the reasons why um yesterday I was saying that Monica was talking about her ruler collection and I was like I have a ruler collection too because a lot of patterns will be like have the pocket size 8x8 eight eight. and even though I can see 8x8 eight 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 on my grid for some odd reason it'll be like 7 7 8 and 8 and 1 4 on one side I'm just like <laughs> and then I get frustrated then I have to walk away from the project. And it's just, it's a little bit faster if I have a ruler. And I could feel, I guess, more comfortable knowing that all the measurements are act accurate for me. But that's just me. I There's like a whole bunch of tricks I've seen people use like wax paper. And I'm still gonna, we're gonna still need um, the pattern pieces because we're gonna have to mark like the, where the magnet is, where the prongs go. Let me just cut out another one of these for the lining. These should be written like if you get the bolt, like they should have the writing on the side of each side or just like right here, just to conserve paper, but that's just me. <laughs> and they like that that particular brand, this particular brand, like the wrapper always like pops out of nowhere out of the trash can. Like it does ne it never wants to stay inside the trash can. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Jillian. How are you? All right. 
So we can put the big one aside for right now and move on to the other ones. So we have the zipper pocket and the front. enough of this for the pocket front just by the hair of my chinny chin chin <laughs> so the pocket back it's shaped like the top of the um, dainty day tripper I'm gonna use for the front pocket I'm gonna use the front of this and the black Linux for the interior. I knew I didn't have enough of the dials and glass too, but I was like, maybe, <laughs> just maybe, but you work with what you got. And then I'm going to grab this will be the lining part. Yeah, I have to do that neatly. And then we'll cut out two of shape lengths. There, um, there is a link for tops and bobbins. And if you don't see it in the comments, I can definitely put it in after the live. Cut this shape flex. Thank you, Catherine. I also I I also buy um when I get tops and bobbins, I always get their by Piora. She has like these really awesome like templates for zippers and purse feet. That's like my favorite thing. <laughs> and this is going to be the back pocket. Because I didn't have enough fabric, I am going to make this the outer part. And then again, the lining, this. Where I leave 
fabric. There are markings that we were going to put on the on this one. There's like notches for where the line goes, where you're going to, um, where the bag pokes out above the teeth. But because I'm using a heat erasable pen, I want to wait until after I'm done interfacing and then I'll make the markings. Yeah. <laughs> Templates are <laughs> templates. Whoever created them, they're they're geniuses because it really does make your life a whole lot easier. This shape flex like wants to unravel all the time too. When we get to the side tabs, I'm going to switch up the interfacing a little bit. It, it says a medium weight and one of my favorite medium weights is called, um, it's Fairfield Structure and I, I get it from fabric.com. not very expensive but um <laughs> I I feel like I'm I like to use different interfacings a lot so I I don't know what to compare it to actually because it's non-woven um I like woven and non-woven it just depends on I guess the, like if I feel like it needs more structure or whatever I'm feeling at the moment. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't have put that away because you need to make the pocket. And if you want to make a slip pocket, I would, I make, I make it the same size as the, the zipper pocket. We're just going to, you would fold it in half and I can make one too to help you. I just like any any empty space in a purse, I just like to fill it up with a pocket. Yeah, I'm really excited that they <laughs> they made this um this this pattern um available. Because I really, really, it's, it's a fun bag. It could be so many different things. I made two so that we can make a slip pocket. And what I'll do is out of the structure, I will make this, this, the slip pocket so that way you can see how it's a little bit more firmer than the regular zipper, zipper pocket. And it's literally called structure medium weight interfacing, which is called for in the pattern. 
It's a fabric.com. At least, I believe. Yes. <laughs> So I'm just going to cut this out of the, um, for the slip pocket that we're going to add. If you don't have, you don't have to add it if you don't want to. It's just something fun to do, um, <laughs> for your, your, you know, pocket purposes. I just, like, um, like you can slip your cell phone or pen or what have you in there. And... I'll cut one out of the shape flex real quick. And then I can put this shape flex aside. This, I'm telling you, I have, me and Shape Flex don't get along. It always, <laughs> it always, uh, yeah, it's not my friend. <laughs> all right, so we cut out all the pattern pieces except the side, the handlebars, <laughs> the zip ends, and I don't have any more of the right I don't have any more of the Allison glass so I'm going to use the lining so everything could just coordinate and it's black so it will look awesome against the black <laughs> you need two of your outer and medium weight interfacing this is what, where I say you just can't have these, you need this, is because you're going to have to fold this in, and what I like to do is once I have interfaced my um, pocket, is I like to draw, <laughs> so that when I'm pressing it, 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 like, it comes out perfect each time. They have the notches where you can, and the dots, where you stick the pen, but the pattern pieces work just as well. This is all I have left of it. <laughs> this goes into my scrap bin of forgotten things. <laughs> I'm going to cut out sorry I have to rip all these things off. I'm gonna cut out two of the um, medium interfacing. Oh my god, yes. I use buckram for a lot because I like to make hats and buckram is really firm like w once it cools down it holds its shape most hats are made out of it unless you're like dealing with straw or whatever I'm a jack of all trades <laughs> um minus cleaning <laughs> uh yeah I use buckram a lot I like to uh, cosplay and make like costumes. So when I see unique interfacings, I'm like, boo, <laughs> we need to get that. Okay. So I'm going to cut out five inch by 44. 
42 of the for the strap I used Shape Flex 101 on the last strap and I, I I felt like it was too flimsy and I definitely want to do see how the structure hold up Yeah, I'm a little chaotic with um, my cutting. You, my workroom looks a hot mess every night, and then I clean it every morning before I go in or before my next project. Like I tell, like Monica or anyone in my group, it looks like Edward Scissorhands came in my fabric shop and was like doing ASL. There's like string fabric everywhere. <laughs> and obviously you don't have to cut out three. I just I like to, I do it like, oh, you'll see when I, I hear, I do it like bias binding and it won't be like all bulk in one area. You can use, if you have um, cotton webbing and or you know, polyester webbing, you can use that in place. Or a thin, thin leather would work too if it's a strap, like strapping. It all depends on how many ounces it is. So we're going to start ironing now. Okay, I, tomorrow when you sew with me, I'm going to have a little steam iron. Um, I believe ironing <laughs> is the key to make your bags look professional and when it, especially when it's cotton. station over to you. <laughs> okay. I like my little mini steam iron that I have, but I have an iron that is a gravity feed that I got from Steve from Gold Star. There will be links. <laughs> These surprisingly cost the same amount, if not cheaper, than the top name brands that you get at Joann's. I believe this cost me like $129. The filters cost me like $14 every six months, or if I really want to do the nitty gritty, I could put the charcoal in myself. <laughs> and it takes distilled water, and I get really great results. I have a, I have, when you guys see tomorrow, I have a huge wool mat, ironing mat, but I have a small one for smaller stations, and that's what is covered with the Teflon. So, very similar to when you see, oh, let me, let me just, sorry, hold on. Yeah, my mats are dirty. <laughs> There's no judging, right? Um, they're just well loved. <laughs> I believe in 
hitting your fabric with some steam so that way you can sorry hitting it with some steam even starch and I'll show you all the different starch. I Dava, I collect starches too, just so you know. <laughs> and I just start ironing and I just have a little patience. It could be really quite relaxing. Um, <laughs> the press, yes, it is faster, but I don't know. When I was younger, and my grandmother, my grandmother, I was born and raised in California, and uh, my grandmother came here from Spain. Um, she made costumes and dresses and tailored um, suits and she had a small business so I would always hem and iron so for me I like ironing I collect a lot of starches <laughs> And if my husband was to come down here right now, he'd be like, yeah. And none of those starches, the starches I use, on, he, he irons his own shirts for work. But the starch he uses, it doesn't come out clear. It comes out white, and I refuse to put it on my fabric. <laughs> and what you can do, um, uh, this is the flatter. I kind of like this one because the it, it's a a fine mist and you can get it and unscent it or it comes in this pineapple smell and it's like heavenly it's like amazing <laughs> um that's one of my favorite ones best press from i get this is at joanne's it has a lavender one i, I have a tendency of using that when i'm frustrated <laughs> and then easy on i have used this for like when i'm making gowns or cosplay costumes and like the pieces have to be like stand on their own so with cottons I tell people did you use starch <laughs> because the final press is very important and if you're a person that gets a lot of shine you're over pressing so that's when you can use something like this and it won't hurt your fabric and it'll be less shiny which one's my favorite actually the flatter I the flatter has like a medium oh so starching makes your fabric more stiff so if you're looking for that vinyl or waterproof canvas look starching will do that <laughs> it will give you it will make your bag we'll we'll starch this bag that we're making tomorrow all throughout the bag and then i'll compare the lilo and stitch bag and you'll see you're going to be like no one said anything about starchy <laughs> just think of collars and why at at um laundry stores they ask if you want extra starch because it works um i pre-washed my fabric what you can worry about shrinking for is um some woven interfacing i pre-wash i um uh, i have a lot of allergies and my son does too so i pre-wash everything because he's allergic to bananas yeah so <laughs> there's that and you could pre-wash your interfacings too 
I don't do that. <laughs> um, it, it's, a, it's a very long process because you have to use like cool water in a bowl, like dunk it in. It's like a, a tedious process so that way all the glue doesn't lose is uh, uh, adhering properties. No, I don't really, I like to quilt. So I, quilters have like a lot of tricks of the trade when it comes down to like pre-washing your fabrics and whatnot. My best suggestion is wash your fabrics like in the lingerie um, cycle. It is a small cycle, no heat, and gets everything clean and have, you have minimal shrinkage. Or you hand wash it. I, and I don't wash my fabric. My, I, I want to refer, if he watches this later on, my husband washes my fabric for me. I don't, I don't wash, I don't do laundry, he does. But I get to pick out cool new appliances. Like he told me that I could pick out whatever wash machine. So I'm like researching like so bad right now <laughs> because I wash a lot. So when I, once, uh, when I'm going to adhere, when I'm going to put these together to make one continuous piece, I'm going to take these two pieces, put them right sides together and an L and go down a line and it'll reduce the bulk. There's always that debate in the groups like, do you pre-wash or you don't? Um, if you have bad allergies, I would suggest you to pre-wash. <laughs> um, if you don't, if it's just a bag and it's not meant to be washed, then you're fine. But if you're making a backpack for like a kid and you think this is going to go on the wash machine, then wash your fabric or the backpack is going to shrink and you're going to get like ripples in your fleece or your foam or whatever because they don't have the same amount of shrinkage. ShapeFlex 101 has a ton of shrinkage. I was reading an article and I think it's like 10% or something. And I was like, holy moly. <laughs> you, I would have weird tips. <laughs> You'll be like, what did she just say? <laughs> but yes, if you're in, if you're looking for an iron and you have the space, get a gravity feed. It, it literally, what is the, is it Oslo or something? Everybody has that one. I wanted to get it too, but I just, I've worked with this before, <laughs> the gravity feed, and I just like the way it, it presses. I, now my mini one, I love. I mean, the bumpy side, of course, goes on. Did I cut out one of those? Yeah. Right here. I like wool mats for this reason, too, because it'll it won't, like, burn down the house. It'll just keep the... <laughs> It keeps the, the it keeps the thing warm and the heat the heat pressure comes from both sides so it, I get a little bit better adherence. My whole desk on the back is just a huge wool mat to iron because I like to make vintage dresses too. That's why also I collect all the vintage dresses <laughs> and shoes. My husband has a he's very patient man. Yes, I use the Teflon sheet. I have them underneath the mat.
And um, I'll show you there tomorrow when I'm interfacing. Uh, sometimes I'll use a cover. Uh, there's two press covers I like to use so that my fabric doesn't get super, like have a shiny spot. But if that happens, if you put like a little bit of vinegar or something on it, it'll go away. I'm just ironing out the wrinkles first because I put them, I put all my fabric on boards and I hate, like you, you see Monica when she like, she's like pressing, she puts it up first so that she can release whatever wrinkles. It's pretty much the same thing. I don't want like a permanent wrinkle. <laughs> Oh, and if you watched my Celine video in Swoon, there is a literal, <laughs> there's literally a take where my face goes like white and my eyes go big because I accidentally put this iron on a plastic drawer that was full of fabric and it went through and I didn't say it on the line. <laughs> but yeah, that happens to me at least. Yeah, flatter. I have a pineapple grove. It smells like cactus cooler or like a pineapple gummy bear. Yeah, vinegar would get out the shiny spot. My grandmother sewed, so. <laughs> You learn just like I have weird hemi tri hemming tricks too. Like I'm a person that hems with bias binding, but then it always I feel like it, you get a cleaner hem. Yeah, the shiny spot just means that you overpressed, and that fabric is like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I have, if I have weird things in my workroom that I use for other things. And I have, as you can see by my really old wool mat, that's probably like older than one of my kids at least, <laughs> um, at least nine or 10. I have a hard time letting the things go. I inherit a lot. I inherited a lot from my grandmother when she passed away. And my mother-in-law also sews. She likes to make garments, but she got sick with um, cancer and she just didn't want to sew anymore. So I've inherited like tons of things that I'm really grateful that I have. And that's why sometimes it's hard for me to give you a list because like sometimes I literally don't know where something came from. I have fabric that I have a friend who is a fabric dealer out here. She says that it came from like 1940 something. It's only one yard. And I have like fabrics from the 40s, 50s. I have the original like um, Wizard of Oz collection, a fabric that was first put out. I mean, I have this gold leaf Wizard of Oz quilt. I'm just trying to find the perfect backing. So it's hard because <laughs> Some things I just inherited. Yes, um, you having if you have the the press, it's so much faster, and you have even distribution, even distribution. But if you don't have the space, or you don't have the budget, or you don't want that in your room, you can just iron and like level up on your ironing um ironer because like so <laughs> i had a shark and a chief and they would leak all the time and they never got hot like this gets hot and it would drive me insane thank you 
think you can need, I, I thought it was too. Allison Glass has really beautiful prints. And for this particular one I got from Emmeline, I feel like there's like a light and a dark. Like her, the white is like really, really white with all the same and the, the, like the other six prints are extremely dark. Which I like. Um, I like the flatter because it uh, releases it releases um, wrinkles faster. I think that's just my opinion. to just warm up the glue and then we'll go and because this is heavier than the normal iron I don't have to be like oh hulking out <laughs> mm. yes um, I have one of the rice feed sacks that they used to that that company used to make really pretty flour and rice bags so that when kids would get clothes made out of it it didn't look bad i have one and i won it on an ebay ebay thing and i don't even remember buying it i also like <laughs> i like to collect sewing books i like to like the Vogue ones, um, because they have interesting tips. Like the first time I made a welt pocket, it wasn't for a jacket, it was for a bag. I just wanted it to look like it was clothes, like a men's jacket or the women's jacket with the welted po uh, pockets. And I learned how to do it from a Vogue magazine and I used it in a bag. And any like fabric, um, like over edges, I'll just like cut it up and clean it up. So yeah, I, there's like a lot of cool history when it comes down to sewing. So, and a lot of it is in books and some of the books that were readily available to uh, my abuelita are like no longer in print now. So I hunt for certain books. There, it's just, like the, over the weekend, last weekend was my um, anniversary and my husband took me to a DC and there is this restaurant that was a bookstore and I totally geeked out because I read a lot and I like bookstores <laughs> and I got a couple of books that are new and then they had the 30th edition um, Prince's Bride and I was like, yes, so, right? Because <laughs> it has like two chapters that weren't in the movie, like the uh, Princess Buttercup's baby. And unfortunately they actually wrote off and they like kill, do the heroes kill for um, um, Andre the Giant's character, Bezik. And I, I've never read it, I've heard of it, but now I'm getting to read it and I'm like really excited about it. <laughs> um, but they also had a Vogue book from like 1972 and I immediately took it and they had um, this hat to make these like, like Kentucky Derby hats. 
not saying I will make one, but if and when I do, I have the resources <laughs> to uh, figure out exactly everything I need. Yeah, I love sewing history. Like, there is one of my favorite books series is um, the Time in Between. It's uh, it's based in Spain, and it was during the World War II, and they had like they called them seamstress. We call them sewers now, but they called themselves seamstress. Um, they were working at like undercover as like CIA, CIA, CIA agents with England. So they would, when women would talk about what was going on in Germany, they did codes inside patterns to tell them what was going on. And it is mind blowing. First, the, the, the talking of like the gowns that they made and how they got to make their own tennis dresses and things like that is amazing. But the fact that someone that sews was able to be like a CIA agent because they can do codes for like pattern work. It just, it, I was like, yes, this is the best book ever. And then Netflix came out with the show. It was like a 12 or 13 part series. It's a really good book. It's well translated into English as well. And it, it goes from between Spain and Tangier, and then also, um, I believe, Puerto Rico. Time in between. Trust me, you're gonna be like, Shinova, and I'm like, I know. <laughs> and then I have a really cool Star Wars book where the, the person who made all of um, Padme's dresses, what her inspiration was one of my favorite books too. I, all books are my favorite. Like picking my favorite book is like saying, Shinova, pick out the favorite star in the sky. You can't. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I was, it's, it, it, you're not into like reading and you don't have time. I don't think, I don't know if Netflix has it on there anymore because it was it came out in 2013, the TV series, but the book I believe came out in 2006. And then the English version came out, I think, 2009. And it's based off of real characters too. Like there is a CIA agent that's British. Her name is Rosalinda Fox. The way they describe her clothes is like, totally amazing we're almost done we have this and then just the two pockets I like I like reading young adult fantasies too, um, but my like my kind of young adult fantasy would be like Patrick Rothfuss, um, the King Killer Chronicles. I don't. It's because it's different. Like it has a it's coming to age story, but you never view the main character Quilk as like a child. He goes through some traumatic stuff fairly early on in the book. And I have like an affinity with like fantasy books that the author has not completed the series. Like, I don't know how I get stuck into them, but they, <laughs> it always happens to me. And I'm slowly Facebook stalking Patrick Ruff is like to come out with the third book so I can finish the series. <laughs> but it has yet to happen. I, I actually think that book series will, like Games of Thrones was like really popular on HBO. It's a great book series. Waiting for those books too. George, I'm just throwing it out there. Um, I think um, the King Killer Chronicles is gonna be something that they put on HBO or something because it is an amazing story with so many different perspectives. 
it's just a really good book. I find I find books. I'm to the <laughs> I'm to the point now that one part of the house, like the stairs going down to the basement, is like a mini library. And I'm really weird with my books. Like my daughter will be like, "Hey, mom, can I read this?" I'm like, "Don't touch my books. Don't touch." Them. <laughs> And I like to get things signed. So I was one of the Twilight people that love Twilight. I have three out of, I have three books signed from Stephanie Myers because I went to two of her viewings. I have three Harry Potter books um, signed by JK Rowling. I'm that person that goes get her book signed. That's why I geeked out with Samantha because I found out about Samantha's book actually before I found out about Samantha. Nosy Pepper has um, had a post about her friend coming out with a book. So immediately before I even finish the post, I'm like Amazoning and it's like won't be coming out until something something 2020. So I get on to Mrs. H's website, seeing the Daily Day Tripper, purchased that from Emmeline because I wanted the actual paper pattern. And then I think I spoke to Lizzie. I've never confirmed it or not if it was Lizzie or Samantha, but I'm, I'm assuming it's Lizzie and asked if I could purchase a book because it wasn't going to be released to America for like a month or two and I had no patience. And then come to find out like the moment I get the book and I'm telling everybody in the swoon admin chat get this book it's amazing um we find out about samantha becoming the new owner of swoon and i was like it's kismet it's supposed to happen <laughs> and because of a lot of interesting events i like now I have a close friend like monica i don't think there's a day that has gone by and we can now almost say almost a year that I have not talked to her. She's a fantastic person that has very similar, like, not only just sewing, but like reading and just, she's a great person. And I think she, because she was a teacher, I think she is like the perfect person to teach people how to sew. She has tons of patience. I don't have a lot of patience. <laughs> I like paranormal, okay, I got some paranormal romance for you too, okay? <laughs> I'm weirdly into like everything, like from cozy mysteries to literature to history. Hist I like historical fiction right now, that's my theme, and I'm always into a mystery. Yeah, have you ever just went back and watched Twilight now that it's been like 10 years and you're like, yeah, a lot of things about this movie is absolutely wrong. A hundred percent wrong. But you were all about it when it came out. Yeah. Just like, okay, sorry Harry Potter fans. I'm a huge Potter fan, as you can, as you tell. But now that you read reread Harry Potter and it's been a minute, don't you think Dumbledore is kind of a, not a nice person? Like, he basically used a child. Like, <laughs> is anyone else out there with me? Because I reread it and it was, I watched it with my soon to be 11 year old because I wanted to have um, a Harry Potter birthday with like floating candles and everything. So she's watching it and she's like, why do people like Dumbledore? And I'm like, oh man. <laughs> I'm, I'm team Edward too. I just felt like Jacob was like super needy and kind of stalkerish. I just don't know. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I have um, Edward's version of what transpires through the Twilight series. I bought the book, I just haven't read it yet. And I, I'm waiting because she waited like 10 years to come out with that book. I'm just throwing that out. <laughs> I know she doesn't know of my private little like, I'm not gonna read you because you waited so long, but I feel like maybe she does, I don't know. 
yeah, there's a lot of weird, embarrassing moments in Twilight. <laughs> and just, yeah. The only thing that still stands out is um, I still like Edward because I feel like he wasn't stalkerish. Like, I feel like, I don't know. A lot of things are wrong with it, though. Because my I had um, my daughter read them and then I gave her the uh, the short life of Brie Tanner and she was like why did you like this book and I was like whoa where is this coming from and she's like there's so much wrong with this book it is not politically correct and I'm like whoa 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 this is stuff of legends and then I reread it and I was like yeah a lot of things wrong <laughs> yeah it's a little stalker. I mean, yeah. He did watch her when she was asleep. That is a little bit. But at the same time, Bella fell irrevocably, hopelessly in love with someone in three days. If that's not a cry for help, I have no idea. <laughs> so we have ironed everything. So we are going to make an extra slip pocket. Oh, I can show you my weird wall of fabric now. <laughs> I did promise that. Hold on. Sorry, I hope you guys don't get sick. Okay. This is my wall of fabric. So, you can't see my finger. Hold on. <laughs> all right. It goes all the way there there and then there's other rows but they're all on these boards now each one of these bookshelves holds 150 of one of these boards yeah so now that you guys know there's no judging i love fabric it's a separate hobby <laughs> all right so we are all finished here and oh here well here's a brief tour of my room I said I was a nerd <laughs> oh this this um calendar is from the lady that made Elsa she has like beautiful art have I like stuffed animals and not to get seasick and this is my wall of glue See, Dalva? Wall of blue. <laughs> Star Wars. A lot of interfacing. Um, more patterns and more sewing books. So, yes. This is my room. And, yeah. Okay, but see, that's different. You weren't 17, Monica. <laughs> she was 17. You were... You did college. You had you had boyfriends. She was like seventeen. <laughs> so it's time to say goodnight. <laughs> you guys seen all my weird stuff, and oh, and stuff. My carpet. It's it's the Death Star, and it tells the story. I'm Ruggable There's Luke Skywalker. I'm your father. No. All right. And then I have my fifty stuff. <laughs> so all right I guess that's it and I'll, I'm going to be here really early tomorrow at four o'clock eastern standard time and we're going to make this bag yeah I, I kind of agree with Tammy he was a, like a vampire he's been around for a hundred years so he knows a thing or two I know <laughs> all right guys I hope you have a wonderful fantastic night and I'll see you in a couple hours because four o'clock will be here in a minute <laughs> thank you Deb you guys have a good night bye